meiosis is also called a reduction division because chromosome numbers become one half in each daughter cell. Meiosis consists of two stages, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. In meiosis 1, actually, meiosis 1 is technically the reduction division because during meiosis 1, the chromosome number becomes one half and two daughter cells are formed from one mother cell. The meiosis 2 occur in both of these daughter cells separately and both of these daughter cells, each one divides into two further. So ultimately, at the end of meiosis, we have four daughter cells. But the division, the actual reduction division in which chromosome number reduced to one half is the meiosis 1. Meiosis 2 is just like that of mitosis. Now we talk about meiosis 1. Meiosis 1 consists of a prophase. We call it prophase 1 because this is uh, the prophase of the meiosis 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1, telophase 1, and a cytokinesis. When the cell divides into two, then uh, when, the, when the nuclear division is complete, then the cell divides into two by cytokinesis. Um, and uh, when it, it, it is almost divided, it starts its next phase of division called meiosis II. Uh, meiosis II is just like the mitosis. It simply divides um, the, both the cells into, uh, uh, equal, uh, into same type of cells with equal number of chromosomes. Now we look at the uh, detailed process of meiosis. Meiosis 1. Meiosis 1 consists of a prophase, then a metaphase, then a anaphase, then a telophase. We look at, first of all, the prophase 1. As we know that uh, the chromosomes, they are just, uh, just like mitosis, they are already duplicated. Uh, they are, they, uh, it means that Every chromosome have two sister chromatids. It is doubled in the number. As you can see in the diagram, there are two homologous chromosomes which are shown. Each chromosome, uh, which is now called each homologue, each homologue will consist of actually two sister chromatids. You can see one in green and the other in blue. The green one is one homologue, that is one chromosome which is duplicated. The blue one is its homologous partner and uh, which is uh, in its appearance just like that of the first one which is shown in blue color and uh, this also consists of two sister chromatids. Now what happened in the prophase 1 as is shown in the second diagram, the prophase 1 is the longest phase of meiosis. In this phase actually the homologous chromosomes they pair up with each other. They come close together and some of their parts uh, attach to each other to make uh, the structures called chiasmata. In the diagram, uh, the second diagram, you can see a single chiasma in which one part of uh, homologue 1 is attached with the or we can say crossed with the part of the homologue 2. We call this process pairing up or synapsis. We say that these chromosomes, uh, the homologues, they are synapsed together. But remember at this stage that only the homologous chromosomes will pair up with each other. As we know that in human beings, for example, they have uh, 46 chromosomes and uh, there will be 23 pairs. The chromosomes in one pair only will make chiasmata with each other. Uh, one homologous chromosome will not pair up with any other homologue set, homologous set. They will only pair up with their own type. If they do so, wrongly that will be an error in the meiosis which may result in um, in a problem later on. So usually or normally homologous chromosomes pair up with each other. We call them these pairing synapses. Now what is the purpose of this pairing? Purpose of this pairing is recombination. These parts of chromosomes which pair up which are crossing each other what will happen that these parts both of these parts will break up from their original chromosome and will attach to the other homologue. As you can see in the bottom of the diagram, now the two homologues are shown, but you can see that the homologue on the top in the green color have a small part of blue color, which is actually broken up during the chiasmata, during the synapses from the homologue 2 and attached to the homologue 1. Same happened with the homologue 2. You can see 
in the last part of the diagram that uh, the one part of homologue 2 looks like green because actually this is the part of homologue 1 which was during chiasma metaphormation again the pairing up broken up and attaches to the homologue 2. Now you see that uh, both of the chromosomes they have a large part of each other they exchanged their parts we say that they exchanged their DNA or nuclear material. The result of this situation is new recombination. Uh, there are new sets of genes uh, which are formed and uh, the result will be new characteristics which will appear in the organism. Uh, this is the most important property and advantage of the sexual reproduction that during the meiosis process uh, the cells they do the chromosomes they do recombine and as we know as many chromosomes as an organism have as many recombinations it can form and every recombination may result into a different characteristic uh, which is and uh, which um, um, which gives an evolutionary advantage to that particular um, organism uh, so uh, meiosis uh, the, this is this the prophase one is uh, one of the most important parts of meiosis. These paired chromosomes, which are making pair, as you can see in the diagram on the top, these chromosomes homologues which are paired, the homologue one and homologue two, collectively are called sometimes bivalents or tetrads. They are called bivalents because both homologues are attached with each other. They are called tetrads because we know that due to duplication or the replication, uh, each homologue consists of now two sister chromatids. So in total, they are making four chromosomes. We call them tetrads or sometimes we call them bivalents. At till end of the uh, prophase one, not many recombinations like this uh, are uh, formed, constituted, uh, because almost every homologous pair pair up with each other and um, they exchange their different parts so a lot many recombinations they are formed with this all the other um, features of uh, the prophase they also uh, takes place uh, the spindle fibers are formed because uh, chromosomes have to attach to spindle fibers to move from their um, place from the center towards the poles so spindle fibers are formed in animal cells uh, centrioles will do it in plant cells, spindle fibers will be formed by other methods um, and uh, the nuclear membrane ultimately at almost end of this phase will disappear um, and uh, now there is one more important difference. Now the each homologous pair is attached with each other by one kinetochore. One, there is one kinetochore for each um, homologous pair which is in contrast to mitosis in which there is one kinetochore per one sister chromatid. Now both sister chromatids of uh, one homologue uh, are uh, attached with only one kinetochore. And this is very important because we know that uh, meiosis is the reduction division and one homologue have to go to one pole and the other homologue have to go to the other pole. Uh, uh, now we know that uh, at, at about um, uh, end of the uh, prophase, the spindle fibers which are already formed, um, each, uh, each homologue attaches to the spindle fibers uh, with its kinetochore. Now because there is one kinetochore per homologue, so every homologue as a whole is attached to a spindle fiber, uh, just which, which is the uh, same is true for the other homolog. There is one more important thing. Um, as we know that every organism um, which is uh, sexually reproduced always have one set of chromosomes coming from the mother and the other set coming from the, uh, the father. Uh, the homologs which are coming from mother and father, they are arranged in, in uh, different orientations that is in one pair for example, the maternal homolog will be, will be on one side. Uh, towards one pole and the paternal homologue will be on the other side. This is different for each chromosome. It means that in a gamete, uh, the 
there is there are uh, about 50 50 chances that uh, the gamete will have a maternal homolog or a paternal homolog which is also a very important feature for uh, we can say new recombination uh, and at the end of uh, when uh, the spindle fibers are formed the chromosomes they attach uh, the nuclear membrane is uh, dissolved or start disappearing um, and it is uh, disappeared at the end of very very long phase the prophase one and then the prophase one ends when the prophase one ends the next phase starts that is metaphase one because this is part of the meiosis one now in the metaphase one the chromosomes the homologs they are attached uh, on the spindle fibers arrange themselves on the equator all of the homologs are arranged on the equators almost in a um, rough straight line or in rough uh, circular uh, we can say part um, and um, uh, after the metaphase comes metaphase one comes the anaphase one now anaphase one is very very important because uh, in this anaphase one of the meiosis the chromosomes have to move towards the pole and now half chromosomes have to go to one pole and the half chromosomes have to go to the other pole what happened that because uh, we know that there was one kinetic core per homolog per two sister chromatids it means that the two sister chromatids are going to uh, move towards one pole and the other two sister chromatids are going towards the uh, the second pole uh, now the microtubules uh, or the spindle fibers they start pulling the chromosomes towards the poles of the cell um, and uh, uh, now because uh, again I repeat the same thing because there is one kinetochore per two sister chromatids of one homolog so one homolog which consists of now two sister chromatids will move towards one pole and the other homolog we can call here homolog 2 which have which uh, which also consists of two sister chromatids will move towards the other pole so the half set of the chromosomes uh, is moving towards one pole and the other half set is moving towards the second pole so this is the anaphase one now this stage is extremely important because if there is a, a slight error uh, in this phase it results into an unequal distribution of the chromosomes in the uh, gametes and if there is an unequal distribution of uh, chromosomes in the gamete um, it result in very very serious disorders uh, when the anaphase finishes the chromosomes are moving towards poles almost they are reaching near poles the last stage of meiosis one starts that is called the telophase one in telophase one the half number of chromosomes reached at one pole the other half of chromosomes uh, half set has reached at the second pole and now the nuclear membrane starts forming and uh, the chromatin material start um, uh, slightly decondensing with this the meiosis one or the nuclear division one of meiosis is complete and then the cell is divided into two cells in again just like uh, in plant cells by a phragmoplast and uh, in animal cells by a cleavage furrow formation cell is divided into two now there is a slight difference from uh, mitosis that what happened that sometimes these cells are completely divided into two uh, when they um, when they are just dividing at the end of their cytokinesis they just start their second nuclear division which is called meiosis 2 uh, because uh, meiosis is a continuous process uh, so what happened that uh, uh, when the nuclear division is complete cleavage furrow is formed and cleavage furrow almost reaches at the end then the next nuclear division uh, just starts we call it meiosis 2 now we um, have a look on a diagram which explains the meiosis 1 if we look at the diagram the first part shows the interface one when the cell is at interface its chromosomes a chromatin material is not very visible and it is showing a centrosome a pair of centrioles the next uh, diagram towards right uh, as you can see 
that the chromosomes, the homologous pairs, they are, uh, they consist of two sister chromatids each and they are forming chiasmata. Now here in this diagram, you can observe that per homologue, more than one chiasmata could be formed. You can see in the small sized chromosome pair, the homologue pair, there is one chiasmata. But you can see uh, the chromosome which is larger one, there are two chiasmata. So it means there may be more than one chiasmata per homologous pair. Then comes uh, the next stage, the metaphase one. In the metaphase one, as we talked about it, in it, the chromosomes are arranged on the equatorial plate in the center, but now each homologue is attached with the kinetochore to the microtubules, the spindle fibers, and not sister chromatids. In anaphase one, you can see that the whole homologue, the complete chromosomes with its both sister chromatids is moving towards the poles. And uh, you can observe various recombinations present in uh, these chromosomes which are going towards the poles. Then comes the telophase, they start uh, decondensing, nuclear membrane starts appearing and the cell divides.